Howdy, my name is Mike and this is my inking demonstration. I've started with a fairly tightly penciled drawing of my character Luko. Um, it's tight but I still leave a lot to the inking process because if you're just applying ink directly over all your pencil lines it gets pretty boring and it leaves out a lot of room for spontaneity and feeling when you're doing the final inking, at least it does for me. I'm using a Sapphire Series 4 brush. It's made of a mixture of sable and synthetic bristles. I find that this tends to keep a sharper point, but also doesn't give quite as much line variance as a full sable brush does. The full sable brush, which is what I learned on, is actually a little harder to control. And quite honestly, is also a fair amount more expensive than the combination sable and synthetic. And I'm using Speedball Super Black ink. It's my current favorite. Um, it tends to flow fairly well, it tends to stay fairly black, and I don't have to make too many adjustments when I'm scanning in the art to Photoshop. One of the reasons that I use a brush instead of digital means like Photoshop or Illustrator is, as you can see, the pad gets turned a lot, and the reason for that is that the direction of the line is going to determine a lot of the character of the line and your hand tends to move in certain directions. I know there are some people who have started off in digital and for them this is no problem at all. It's just what I've learned with and this is what I'm comfortable with and quite honestly I'm a lot faster with the brush than I would be with Photoshop. The other thing that I really like about ink over digital means is that for me once the brush has hit the page, I have to make a decision. It's right then and there. This is the line. This is what I'm putting down. I don't have the ability to undo, which is a big benefit, but it can also be a real problem. Um, I find that I tend to be a lot more decisive with the brush than I am with digital means, because as I said, once the ink's lines down, that's pretty much it. You can go back and use either gouache or opaque white watercolor or acrylic to of course correct lines or once it's scanned in Photoshop. But for me, once the line's down, that helps determine the character of the piece and I just move on from there. So this line that's coming up next is pretty much the essence of how I like to ink. It's very simple, it just starts thin, gets thicker, and then thins out again. This is all done with pressure on the bristles, and that line variance, the change in thickness of the line, is what for me gives the character some life, or gives the drawing some life. I used to ink with Marsmatic Technical pens, and they gave a very nice, thin, crisp, steady line that, because of its lack of variance, was rather cold and boring. Um, I was actually warned against this by a comics professional and he told me the exact brush I should go out and buy and the exact ink I should use, which is the same that many comic artists have used. And in essence he was right, at least for my kind of art, in that the brush is going to give me a lot more of what I eventually wanted to have. One of the first things to learn is where the line is supposed to get thicker and when it's supposed to get thinner. And in general, it's just going to be the architecture of the curve. Lines tend to be thicker with a brush in the middle of the curve or the apex of the curve and thinner at the ends. But you're also trying to suggest a sort of volume or a weight with them. And through practice, you get to learn where those lines should be thicker and when they should be thinner. So for example, if I did say the curve under his chest where it was thick in the middle and then thin in the center and then thick at the other end again, it would have a much different feeling. It would make the anatomy carry a different weight than it does. The same thing with the center line of the tongue that I just inked there. If it was, if it didn't come to a point, if it was thick at the end and then thinned out towards the back of the tongue, it wouldn't look quite right and wouldn't suggest the same sort of thing as it does now.
So there's no real rhyme or reason as to what line I start with or what direction I go into next, except for one very important thing. And this is something that digital artists never have to deal with, and that's smudging. And pretty much there's no drawing I do, no inking that I do, where I don't smudge something. It just happens. And it's because I'm not paying attention, and I don't look and see what ink has dried and what ink has not. And I guess it's just one of the last sort of artifacts of, of doing things in an analog style. This drawing I do fairly well in. Uh, I managed to get almost all the way to the end before I smudge, and thankfully the smudge is very small and, and easily corrected um, when scanned into Photoshop. But there you go. That's one of the benefits and joys of working with ink. One of the other things too is that for what's called spot blacks, which is what I'm doing right now, which is just filling an area in with solid black color, it's much easier to just click a button in Photoshop. And I could do that, but I prefer to have things done all one way. That's the one benefit of having used a crappy camera, and that is when I do smudge, you can't really see it. And I do apologize for the fact that the resolution isn't any better than it is. This is my first try at this kind of thing. And my first little tiny video camera. So hopefully if there's any interest in these, um, I will get a better camera and things will be easier to see. At the end of the video, I do have a higher resolution view of the finished drawing. So get a better idea of what it's supposed to look like. I won't lie, inking with a brush is not easy. It takes a number of years to get to any kind of level of competency, and I am by no means a master. I don't know if anybody ever is. It's one of those things that I've heard described as something that no one ever truly masters. They just continuously learn throughout their lifetime or career. For me, it's just the way to do things. I love a black line on white paper, and I don't have any other medium for me that gives me that kind of spark. <laughs> 